Hello, peeps. Say hi to the nice internet people. Hello, peeps. <laughs> this is uh, Mitch, my buddy, who is part of the MAG Mutual Assistance Group, uh, core member, would you say? Yeah. You kind of like the VP. Yeah. You kind of like the VP. I roll like that. You're better than Biden, though. <laughs> <You're>... <laughs> way, way better than Biden. So, uh, Doug Brown, a.k.a. Top, asked many moons ago about a first aid video, and I did one. It was like 45 minutes long about all kinds of stuff. And I said, my buddy Mitch has the big kits, and he's the guy who knows all the stuff. So here he is with all the stuff and the things that he knows, and uh, you're going to show us your big kit, right? Yep, my truck kit. This is your truck kit. This okay. is my truck kit. All right, so this is your truck kit. So one of the first things when I went to select a kit, it was about... Uh, I looked at a lot of the pre-made stuff, uh -huh. and it just it wasn't me. Right. And so I opted to get an old military bag, uh, typical med medical kit bag, and stock it with what I wanted. Right. And so um, that's what you see here. Um, you actually see the date on top with the duct tape, and I'll get into this a little bit further. Um, but this is the last time I checked it. Okay. Um, and there's been a reason why I checked it, and it was because in the last two weeks, <laughs> I've had to use this, and I've got some lessons learned from um, not having, not checking this as often as I probably should. Um, so I'll go into a little bit, my one of my little ones, uh, and they're both crazy and get hurt all the time. <laughs> he decided to go swinging off a bunk bed and puncture wound, got a puncture wound right here. Um, and so I was outside, in the garden why I heard him scream and I went inside um, and saw it got the bleeding uh, got the bleeding stopped wanted to get an ice pack for him to take on the way to um, the medical center uh, to get stitches, get stitches in it because yeah. when I got it stopped when I got the bleeding stopped and I looked at it I could see the fat layer so I knew it had punctured through the skin and that he's gonna have to get stitches um, I went to uh, charge the ice bag and it got Luke cold. And so I realized, hey, I gotta look at some of these perishables a little bit more often. Um, I, I need to you know, go through everything in the kit, pull it out, put it back in. Uh, and not only for my memory of where it's at, um, but just to make sure it's good. So that's why this is here, and we'll talk a little bit more about it. Um, pretty good, I mean, it's a pretty good bag, it's waterproof. This is something that I could throw on one of my small kits. So where'd you get the bag? Uh, do you I remember? Think, I think it was just Amazon, okay. um, but it could have been at one of the stores that I used to go to where I lived before I live here so now. This is kind of the typical cube bag. Yes. Yep. Okay. Yep. And so we'll go ahead and open it up. And I'll turn it this way. Okay. So you can see the writing. Here, let me uh, let me spin this around. So okay. you can see the fresh, um, you can see the fresh duct tape on it um, with the writing on it and so that's less for me to know where things are at right and more for if I, somebody rolls up on an accident I had in my truck and finds right. it they'll know exactly where to get uh, get the stuff so I have a background uh, former EMT I'm not my qualification lapsed long time ago right I could give IVs if I rolled up on a scene to help I would never give one because of uh, the, you know the chance of getting sued the legality of it but if a nurse or doctor rolled up then somebody could take that and and, and use it and so you know that's why you see the two kits uh, for the IV kits in here so I work mine left to right uh, left being some of the stuff that I'm gonna use a lot more often right being the holy crap something just happened and uh, <laughs> like I'm strapping up a leg or something right uh, so in the in the first of the you know the more serious are just some some very large trauma dressings right something that i could slap on anything right get some pressure going and get bleeding slowed down or stop and then I mean, that's going to be you know that's going to be things that are extremely serious uh serious wounds uh and then next above it uh bleed stop bandages mm -hmm. these are pretty cool because if you see, you can see the shape on there. Oh, right, um, yeah. You wrap these up and position them right. Um, they uh, help apply direct pressure to the wound. Okay. You can stop the bleeding a lot faster. Amazon? So, uh, either that or CVS. It CVS? Was, it was one of the two. Oh, they have them at CVS. They have a lot of stuff at CVS. Um, a lot of the stuff I got in here, though, 
uh, did come from Amazon. Okay. And you know, to me, it was cheaper to customize a bag uh, than it would be for me to purchase the bags yeah. that are out there. That's kind of what I talked about in the uh, trauma kit video that I did. Mm -hmm. That like the basic kit is okay, but it's 800 band aids and some tape. Yeah. And so. Yep. I definitely did some filling in. Yep. So. Exactly. I mean, and you can start with one of those kits. It's just. You know, now think about, okay, what are the other things that it doesn't have that I need to put in there? Right. Um, so when I move over to my, kind of in the in-between I'm going to be going into, obviously the two IV kits are there. And I mean, these things are, these things are full kits. Amazon. Amazon. Yep. And now <laughs> you will see, because I had to use my suture kit this weekend, or one of them. Um, and so that's just the bag itself. And then this is the bag with the full kit in it. Right. It literally has a, everything you need, including the tourniquet to tie around so that you could you could put an IV in. So could you give me a catheter if I needed one? I wouldn't if, want to. If I drank but, if I drank too much. But I probably could. <laughs> okay. That's good to know. We, we used to give ourselves IVs after a night of drinking <laughs> and uh, stand there, the guy next to you, don't Sque hang them. Yeah, you squeeze just squeeze them. it. Yeah. And, and all the next thing you know, you're, you're freezing because of all the liquids in your body so fast. <laughs> that, that never happened. <laughs> yeah. In theory. Your taxpayer dollars never paid for that. In, in theory, that happened. Um, all right, so uh, let me go up here. So some standard elastic bandages, cold packs are in here, and then if it was a really bad wound, yep. um, I've got the trauma bandages. These are a little bit more pricey, but they're worth their weight in gold. Yeah, they're about eight bucks a piece. Um, I covered those in uh, the video that I did on first aid, and I've got them in my blowout kits because if you need something right now, they'll do it. Yep. Triangle bandage. Yep. Is that what that Triangle is? Triangle bandages. Okay. Um, they could be used for a variety of things, not just medical. I mean, yeah. you know, to create a sling for an arm uh, yep. injury, uh, make a bandana, like be a cool guy. Filter crap out of your uh, <laughs> water bladder if you have to dunk it. Yep. Yep. Okay, and then, so now into some of the more used stuff. Um, this is actually pretty cool. I got this recently. I, uh, uh, I joined a crate club just because I wanted to see the kind of stuff that they were sending, and I didn't do, like, the the you know max level right number whatever it was uh, I just did the normal membership for a year and so they had this rats tourniquet in there and I'd never seen one of these before um, I don't want to right we could do something separate on it if somebody's do really a break out yeah, yeah. Um, if you got if you guys are into this go watch somebody's video that's a yeah. certified medical professional and they'll walk you through step by step how yeah. to use it but you know this is different from and, and this is you could do it on yourself Yes. One-handed. Yep. So if it was this arm, I could do this on myself. And this is designed, the only thing that for this one that I wish uh, the elastic was a bit bigger to fit the web belt that I wear. Right. Um, because it, it's just too hard to get on. Because if I could get it on my belt, I would wear it. Right. And all you'd have to do is pull and this whole thing comes Yank out. Yank it out and then you're good to go. Um, you know, but that would be my only, uh, and this is readyman.com. Okay. Um, and that's the only complaint I would have on this. I put it on myself a couple of times um, just to do it one-handed. Um, and it that. just cinches into itself. And it weighs like uh, nothing. 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 And that's, I, I intended that I actually wear that on my belt every single day. Right. To have it with me all the time. Yeah, that's, uh, that's better than a handkerchief or something for sure. Um, and you think, okay, may, everything I've read about tourniquets, like that's too thin. Right. right. That's, oh, I don't have my tape measure. Uh, this is too thin for it. It's but about the, a half inch. But the way that you put it on, right? the way you wrap, you build that up. So you're getting more surface area. Exactly. So and you're so, getting an inch, inch and a half, two yeah, inches. I, I don't remember what the, the rule of thumb on it was, but you wanted at least something that was probably about this wide. Yeah. Just to make sure that you didn't damage the limb. Yep. And so that's how you do it with this without damaging the, lip, uh, the limb. Yeah, because the cat tourniquet is inch and a half yeah, wide or so yeah, yep. but that's like the the problem with a cat tourniquet is it's got that stupid keeper that goes around the top of it so if you were to wear that on your belt i could just see catching that on everything everything right yeah and you get maybe the same concern with this right um but i do like the design and and uh 
you know, if I had to put this on somebody, it, I could throw it on quick. Yeah. Um, you, it does take a little bit of learning because it's already got a circle on there. Right. That you're just then grabbing and bringing it around, but it, it does take some practice. And, you know, that's one of the things, one of the lessons I learned this weekend was, you know, how out of practice I'd gotten. I hadn't given, uh, I hadn't given stitches or sutures in probably 10 or 12 years, if not longer. And uh, it was like relearning when I had to give them to the guy that I gave them to over the weekend. And if I got to do it again, I would have done it differently um, from what I started remembering from actually doing it. And right. so, you know, the application, it's great that I have all this, but if I'm not using it, and this is, I grab it out of my truck if I gotta bring, do something with the kids, if it's more serious than the stuff that I keep in the house. Right, so um, you're saying there's value to actually being a practitioner and using your gear? <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> okay, uh, just checking. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so again, you know, standard gloves. Right. Uh, this came in one of the crate clubs. Um, and I don't know. Hi, Everett. Hi, Everett. <laughs> and uh, this came in one of the crate clubs, and I'm I'm kind of eh about it, but it's basically a gigantic wet wipe. Right. Um, and it's meant more for a survival pack. Uh, I didn't want to put it into my pack in the truck right. so instead I opted to just throw it in here so not really relevant but it's it's, it's, it's there only, yeah, yeah it's there um, splint yep universal splint so this just molds to the shape that you need it it's nice too because it gives you a little guideline on how to place it depending on where the limb is right and so it's uh, got great pictures too yeah is and, it like and so this is great <laughs> yeah this is great for <laughs> For anybody who's never given a splint, right? Just a basic information on how you do it. So you wrap it around the guy's face, right? <laughs> until it's until it's red. <laughs> okay. And that's when you know you got it right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, I won't pull all of this out, but you know, there's isopropyl alcohol, right. um, iodine wipes, uh, bite uh, bite wipes. Um, I do carry a bottle of the scrub care, Exodyne. It's for surgeons to, to scrub their hands. Right. Um, even though you know, you're wearing gloves or you might not get a chance to wear gloves. Right. And you, you can hit your hands with that. So you're gonna hit that before or after uh, rendering aid? Well, if it's an emergency situation, um, you know, that's probably not even gonna be a thought. Okay. If you're rolling up on something and it's, and it's something that, okay, the guy's not gonna die, Right. In the next two minutes, right. Uh, I can get gloves on. Right. Or if the guy's not going to die in five minutes, let me wash my hands. It, it just depends on the situation. Gotcha. Um, so Q-tips, stethoscope, um, eye drops, calamine lotion, some purified water. Uh, and that purified water is for um, an eye wash. Right. So not to be confused or mistaken for um, something that I would use con consume. Right. Um, uh, some burn spray. The only thing I'd say, an aspirin. The only thing I'd say with burn sprays, because I'm, I'm kind of back and forth on them. Because uh, one of the things that you want to make sure you don't do is if you're using something that's petroleum based, mm -hmm. you could actually hold the heat in and make the burn worse. Okay. And so, um, you know, if you get something, make sure it's not petroleum based to where it's a cream that you should put on at well after the burn to heal. Right. Um, not right after the burn. Immediately after. Because if you do that, a second degree will go to a third degree. Oh, right? really? You'll you'll hold the heat in. Gotcha. Because um, if you ever got burnt, I'm sure we all have. You know how hot that that right. you know that burn wound, even if it's a first degree, is. And you think about putting a dome over that wound. Right. And it's just holding all that heat in, and there's nowhere for it to go. Um, so that's that. Middle one's a little bit more busy. Um, I'll jump to the top one first. Okay. So this is the, the suture kit, some band-aids, and the quick clot. Um, a variety of, I mean, I've even got a couple of throat sticks. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, in case I need to sharpen them and stab somebody in the neck. <laughs> uh, I need a couple more of these in here because I've used them right. over the last probably year or so. But, I mean, this stuff is really, really good. Um, expensive again. Right. Uh, you know, but if you get a really bad wound and you could slap this on, um, it could save your life 
uh, from bleeding if you're out in the middle of nowhere. So yep. uh, I usually have like three or four of these in there. Uh, and again, bunch of band-aids, uh, miscellaneous uh, band-aids, assorted variety packs, all purchased separately. And then yep. my suture kit, which I used. Yeah. Uh, that I used this weekend. <laughs> All right, just be quiet, buddy. Um, and so, and I'll point this out. So, one of the things here, and again, this is my practice. Right. Um, but these are all individually sealed. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and let me find one that I could use in this example. I'll have to open it. So, these are all individually sealed, and in a lot of cases, uh, individually sealed twice. So there's an outer seal, right? And then you've got the actual pack seal, right? Um, and if you look at the expiration date, mm -hmm. uh, I oh look, my gosh! I look at this the same way that I look at canned goods, right? <laughs> Go with Best Buy dates, right? Um, I look at that the same way. As long as this hasn't been tampered with, punctured, right? I'll hit I'll hit the needle uh, with iodine beforehand. I mean, this to me is still good, and in a bad situation, it's I, not going to matter. Who cares? Yeah, I, probably not going to get botulism. But uh, yeah, the, uh, the the stitches I did this weekend, I, I would have done them much differently. Um, but again, it's about being out of practice for so long, right? And not thinking, you know, that I'll well thinking that I'll pick it up, right? And it just be like it happened yesterday. Right. Um, you know, it's not like riding a bike. Uh, it takes you at least, and it's and it's physical practice too. It's not watching a video and bang. Uh, right. You know, Get, I had I had issues with um, the needle in the forceps um, turning on me. Yeah. Um, trying to roll in you. Yep. Uh, yep. And it, you know, so all these things that I had you know known how to do without getting that roll in there. Yeah. Um, that. You know, now I wasn't setting my needle up right when I was going to make the stitch, and that's why I was getting the roll. I needed to do it in a different way, but you know, all of that kind of fell off my radar from not having done it uh, in so long. Because life happened. Because life happened. Life, you, know? life. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but in you know any of your equipment, you should try using it as much as you possibly can. Um, you know, I look at this much differently now than I did um, than I did before this. Oh, actually, no, we did go through this one. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, but you can see everything written there. It said I had to double labor because I threw so much. There's airways in here as well. Right. Um, anything else I missed? I don't think so. Um, some anti-itch stuff. That big old wet wipe. We went over that. <laughs> uh, eye drops. Uh... There is a CPR mask in here too. Okay. I won't pull it out, but it's just the pop-out mask yeah. that you can throw over one uh, one-way valve, so the person doesn't uh, expel back into your face or mouth because um, that's not pleasant. <laughs> <clears throat> but you know that's that's my big kit that is in my truck all the time. You know, and again, I think the thing that I would stress is that okay, you know yeah, yeah. the reason. Can we go, no, to their house? go ahead. Go ahead. <clears throat> The, the reason why I have everything labeled like this is not for me, but for anybody else who could come across this. And if I'm unconscious on the ground, I've given them a tactical advantage to getting me better. Yeah. So, I mean, unless you got any other questions, so that is it. If I'm going to treat you, you should probably put like two or three beers in there <laughs> also. Because, okay. Um, what, do you have any input as far as resources for the standard off-the-shelf civilian with zero experience zero training who should they see as far as getting training i refer people to the red cross because they do it for free yeah you have any other suggestions no that'd be the one i'd point you to i okay. mean it's free so yeah. i mean you don't have any excuse of why not to why not to go and you know you start getting into some of the paid courses and you're talking like big money yep. um you know uh, advanced cardiac life support where we we massaged a pig, a live pig. Well, that then they killed. Uh, <laughs> right. Heart back to life to beating, right? Oh, wow. Uh, things like that. But, I mean, you're talking yeah. tons and tons of money to be able to do that. So, um, I mean, get your basic training from, 
Yeah, I, yeah. I mean that's the best. That's the best answer I think for just a you know normal average person. And then you know looks look stuff up, but just make sure when you're looking things up that it's a reputable source that you can back up with other sources. Right. Um, and then you know, and especially somebody in your group has got to be proficient at this. Um, and everybody needs to be familiar with it. That's what I was just going to ask. Yep. Uh, so everybody should have basic first aid down. Absolutely. Okay. Um, absolutely. Because, you know, think about it, the rule of threes. Three yep. is two, two is one, one is none. Yep. Um, you know, depending on the size of your group, you should have two people probably who are good At enough this on level. this. Ideally three, right? Yep. Because what's the likelihood of those guys being the ones who go down first? Right. It's what's going to happen. I right. Mean, you're going to. Because that's how Murphy rolls. You have one dude. Yeah. That's the dude who's going to go down. <laughs> and then you're going to have nobody yep. uh, to, to fill in for them. Have you found that uh, medics make the worst patients? Uh, <laughs> um, I've been my own patient a number of times. And uh, I actually would. I actually would rather prefer. Hey! Hey! <laughs> uh, yeah, it's a crazy house here. Yeah, it's uh, cool. But uh, so, yeah, I don't, <laughs> I'm a good patient. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Cool. All right. But but yeah, that's it. And, and I mean, I would just say, you know, if there there's any comments, uh, questions at all, yeah, let uh, us you know. know. Please list them and and try to help answer them. Again, this is just me and my way. And, and how I, how I, you know, see things from a medical perspective um, for myself and family and, and even in any emergency situation. So you're the top guy in the group, medically speaking, right now. Mm -hmm. So, and then the rest of us follow in your footsteps to the yes. best of our ability. Yep. Okay. Okay. So, thank you. Yes. Thank you very Absolutely. much. Um, you guys will let us know what you want to know and... Uh, We'll tell you to the best of our ability. So, let's do quick questions. I'm going to ask you questions. You, okay. You have to answer first thing that comes off the top of your head. Okay. Is Kuwait a real deployment? No. <laughs> That's all I really wanted to know. <laughs> Roger that. All right. Thank you again. And uh, let us know what you guys want to see. Bye.